Hi, I'm Nancy Clark. And I'm Amory Wallace Phillips. We're the Hospice Improvement Coordinators with VO and Oxford, and this is Morning Chats with Anne Marie and Nancy. Cheers. Cheers, Nancy. Anne Marie and I are still filming our morning chat series over Zoom uh, to practice social distancing and follow the stay at home orders. And today we wanted to talk about a topic that really comes up very frequently with a lot of our clients these days, Mm -hmm. and that's funerals and rituals in the time of COVID-19. This has been an area of deep pain and sorrow for people who have had um, a person in their life die during the pandemic because there hasn't been that opportunity to have a funeral or a ritual in the way that we're used to. And as many of you are, are very aware, funerals are incredibly meaningful and they're essential rites of passage for, for individuals. Mm-hmm. We have had funerals in our society since the beginning of time for several reasons. Um, number one, they help us to acknowledge the reality of the death. Um, yep. They help us to remember the person who died and share those very special and important memories with other people. Mm-hmm. They help us to support one another in our grief. And they also help us to express our inner thoughts and feelings. Funerals mark the significance of the life that was lived. As well, they allow us to embrace the wonder of life and death. So they're very important and meaningful rituals. Um, And although we're not able to have funerals at this point in time the way we're used to, There are certainly ways to commemorate um, a person's life with a funeral or a ceremony in the times of COVID. Absolutely. Yeah. In times of COVID, try to have an initial funeral service in a timely fashion. If it is all possible, um, consider having a very small um, service shortly after the death. This will help you embark on a very healthy mourning pattern. Keep in mind that there is no rule that you only can have one funeral or one celebration of life. You can have as many services as needed. Once again, with pandemic restrictions, consider having a small brief service right now, possibly a graveside committal um, service or a brief service uh, preceding cremation with the closest mourners present either in person or virtually, um, and you could maybe follow by a larger uh, gathering at a later time. Right. And if meeting in person with a few others is not possible, as in the times right now when we're at a strict stay-at-home order, consider having a small ceremony wherever you are. Yeah. So if you cannot be close to the person who died, it is still helpful and healing to hold a small ceremony right now wherever that may be. So simply gather a few close friends or family members, either in person or virtually, Mm -hmm. display photos of the person who died, light a candle, Mm -hmm. maybe say a prayer or read a text um, out loud that is meaningful to you. Playing music, so so therapeutic, um, and share thoughts and memories of the person who has died. So you will find that this informal type of funeral, it will help you mark the occasion of the death. It will help you to pay tribute to the person who died. And it will also help you to feel the sense of acknowledgement, of remembrance, and allowing other people to be a part of that too will aid in, in your support. Absolutely. Watching the news the other day, And I thought it was absolutely brilliant and so compassionate of the newly elected U.S. President uh, Biden and uh, the newly elected uh, Vice President um, Harris um, that they had a uh, ceremony to commemorate and to honor the individuals who have died of COVID in in the U.S. I I think it was absolutely wonderful uh, because there is collective grief all over the world and I believe that that is that ceremony um, is going to be a sign of uh, the start of healing um, for not only the American people 
but also um, for the world. Um, it is their way of recognizing the importance of ceremony and the importance of honoring um, the, the dead um, to help with the grieving process. Such a great point, Emory. Absolutely. Also, if possible, use technology to foster closeness and participation. I am the first one to admit uh, there is Zoom fatigue going on. However, if we can embrace that technology via Zoom, via Facebook, or even the telephone um, to stay connected, um, at this time of loss, we want our loved ones close. And with the pandemic, it is making it almost impossible um, to be together physically. So the next best thing is to use technology to stay um, connected and to reach out to people who care about the uh, news of the death, to support one another and to discuss funeral planning. Right. So services can be, they can be webcast or recorded and made available online um, yeah. now or later. Obituaries, guest books, video tributes, they can all be placed online and man, many already are. Yeah. Um, mourners can video record themselves talking about the person who died, recording their own condolences, um, or even recording themselves reciting a poem, playing music, um, reading a hymn, or singing. Social media is yeah. very effective at helping keep everyone up to date um, on details of the service or providing a chance for far-flung friends and family to support one another. Mm -hmm. As well, turning to technology is a very good way to involve others in the funeral planning process. So this is an enormous um, area where people can, can offer their support and they can offer their skill set. People always want to help. We hear that all the time. Yeah. And that's especially true right now when many are stuck at home, yeah. feeling bored and feeling helpless. Yeah. So tech savvy friends and family members mm -hmm. can all pitch in to help create videos, edit and upload photos, um, write social media posts. Mm -hmm. And the more people who can participate and be a part of that communal um, mm -hmm. memorial, the better. Yeah. I think it's also important to remember that funerals are for the living. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Our next point too is plan a larger service and or reception um, when pandemic restrictions have lifted. Um, even if you must delay a larger public gathering, those who want to support you will still be happy to attend um, months from now. Mm -hmm. So don't assume that there is a time limit on holding larger public gatherings because once again, there is no time limit. Everyone is understanding that the pandemic is affecting public events. Consider holding a smaller initial service or commemoration uh, right away and then schedule the additional service uh, down, down the line. Um, and sometimes too, I think by holding it a little bit down the line, you can further gather your thoughts. And this also allows individuals um, to gather more, more memories that they would like to, to share and honor their loved one. Yeah. And also to receive ongoing support, yeah. you know, even in non-pandemic times, so many people say that they were almost overwhelmed with support in the early days, yes. um, but that peters out over time. So planning for a service down the road when restrictions have lifted, when we're all um, yeah. being able to gather together once again, can ensure that there is that ongoing support in place. Absolutely. So for more information, feel free to reach out to us by phone or email or visit voonoxford.ca and subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our previous morning chat videos. Take care. Thanks for watching.